Gee, what could be up this ladder? Think it'd be where we're meant to go? I think we're done here, guys, aren't we? Ah, I'm just kidding. Let's go. Let's go punch an executioner in the face. Break into the Coliseum. Let's go. In the words of Enter Shikari, oh, they love a good execution. This guy obviously means business. A crowd in the background, deliciously low res. This game looked pretty good at the time, you know. I think on the GameCube, it probably could have looked a little better if they put a bit more effort in the up in the textures. Marco thinks we've given up. I think they probably could have upped the textures a little bit on the GameCube. I don't think it really got much of an overhaul for the Dreamcast. Just a yeah, this big hole in the floor. And obviously that's where they dispose of the bodies after they've executed them. And that's why that thing is full of skulls and bones and whatnot. And that's probably a good deterrent to stop people from breaking in. I wondered what she what was there. It was obviously sort of half off screen, this weird prison car thing. She was waving people out of. I will kill as many people as I have to. So if that blob was a mini-boss, this guy's the main boss of the area. It's a pity that that hole doesn't feature into the battles. Like, I can't just throw people down it. I always guard on the first turn of a boss battle. I have everyone feel it out a little bit. This guy obviously means business. And this guy's just annoying. Hundred and four damage, I can take it. Sonic Wave. Ooh, quite strong. Imagine if we hadn't been guarding. Let's take out the support act. And have everyone else guard for a turn. Yeah, he's dead. He gone. I was watching White Sox baseball uh, the other night, and I just laugh every time the commentator said that on a strikeout. He gone. Once again, everyone's just focusing on Ika. Nice by healing turn coming up. You guard. You attack that guy. I'm trying to work out what's good against yellow. Green is good against yellow. <laughs> oh crap. I've seen this move before. Dracwing uses this. It's painful. It's very painful. 900 watts. That's half of Dracwing's health pretty much. The good news is, he doesn't seem to use it on anyone other than Drachma. And then I realise that this guy, I may as well just use a special attack on him, he's going to be hanging around for long enough. You know, if if Aika had a healing turn, for example, and then she got hit by Tackle, she'd be dead. I also decided I wouldn't heal a thousand HP for Drachma. The Sacrees Crystal would probably be a lot more useful later on. I figured just topping off his health to the point where he's not going to die on an attack will be enough. When I very first played this game, it should work, yeah. When I first played this game, I was terrible at strategy for RPG fights. 
and it never clicked to take out the support guys. Because not only are they good casters, they also heal. Well, hey, Noxie, that poisons people. That could be a nice little uh, boost. You know, he's weak against green as well, so it should be doubly effective. How does that go? Not very. I mean, it knocks him off his feet. Doesn't poison him. Yeah, you can hear there when Vice says, here goes, you can tell how really compressed the voices are. Here he goes again, using tackle. At least this time, Dracula's guarding. I don't know, if we were standing in a line, I don't know if this would go through everyone hit multiple people. Come on, Vice. You know what to do. Yeah, at, at this stage, with two pretty effective people in the party, I figure it's not worth having um, I could do a huge amount. She can just sit there for support, really. Not that they need it. In fact, she just guards most of the time. Yeah, Cutlass Fury ends up not doing a huge amount this against this guy. Green's supposed to be strong against yellow, but I'm not. I'm not seeing it. I regretted pretty instantly not using a Sacri's Crystal on Drachma when, was, when the Executioner used Sonic Wave right after using Tackle. So, yeah, proper heal. But then he was probably defending that turn, so that might be why it did less damage. We have a guard turn now. Yep. And we go with tackle. Sure, mine is meant to be done. Even then, you know, it's only doing 200 odd damage. It's quite annoying. And his defense is up from Incrum being cast on him. This should work. Oh, keeps Vice topped up a little bit. I think one thing that really annoyed me through this section this action-packed section that I mentioned, is that you don't actually get to top up your items anywhere. Once you leave Lower Valua, that's it for a while. So you better make sure you're well equipped. So I advise you to increment on itself. Moons, give me strength. I've had enough of doing 200 damage. I probably should have cast increment much earlier. see how much this does and I've also switched to red for vice twice as much damage I don't know how much you can attribute that to the color change or how much you can attribute to the Incrum being cast and now we get the glorious music Yep, time to switch everyone's my, everyone's colours back. The end of the battle is coming close. He gone. That wasn't so bad. Aw. No epic explosion. I don't like it when bosses don't explode. Nice amount of gold there. Sacri's crystals. 
and electric rocks, which I probably won't use. Hey, that guy beat up one of our... Why are they throwing confetti? I mean, why are they celebrating that? They wanted to see the air pirates executed. So why are they throwing confetti when we punch the executioner in the face? I don't get it. Hearing this music, I always thought someone was going to come down after me. And I'd have another fight on my hands if I didn't hightail it out of here. Don't think that ever happens. I never hung around to find out, but I don't think it happens. There's a game coming out. I don't know how much. I don't think anything's been really heard of from it for a while. I think it's called 20,000 Leagues. Which is very much... It reminds me of Skies a lot. Like, I don't think it's a JRPG. I think it's just an adventure game. But it really does remind me of this. The look and feel of it. And this is where Marco lives. He got four seconds. He could sell that for a little bit of gold and eat. So using them to cure his sore stomach from not eating. Also, we don't really feel bad. I mean, we're only meant to be taking stuff from rich people, but we seem to be happy enough taking sacred crystals from an orphan. And of course, Dine is complaining that we're late. really weird way of looking around. Yeah, where's the girl? The plot continues to thicken about her. <gasps> yeah, like it's like it's Dine's fault that she's taken to the palace. I mean, come on, Vice. I don't have all the answers. <laughs> Fairly obvious what the right answer there is. Now we have even more magic to use. And Dracula is really on board with all of this. Don't know why. And he only said he'd get us here. Everything's conveniently connected by sewers. And Drachma has left the party. Push battle heal. I still have a moonberry left. I think I'll hold on to that for now. to think nothing was going to happen down here. I would have been happy with nothing happening down here after just having a, had a boss fight, but you know. One of these cute little rabbit armadillo things. from a pretty point-blank range. Yeah. Okay, I must have been defending because Ike is really not doing anything against it. That's pretty hard hitting for a little rabbit armadillo thing. You're really not very accurate with that long range attack.
these guys have about 70 HP. Yeah, if I'd had Ike hit that one, we would have been out of here a turn ago. With two guys now, it makes it a little harder to come across or to level up your magic. I keep pressing the wrong button to go to the menu. Okay, let's get uh, let's get Vice some yellow magic. Not that he uses a huge amount of magic, but let's get it before we head back down into the. And we got taken by surprise. Ah. By these weird bat things. I'm gonna signs of it. Woodpeckers as well. Ah. See what I mean? These are pretty much through here, like the only guys that consistently use magic against you. Which is why I didn't worry about Ika's magic defense too much. Didn't think I would get that one in the corner. No, it really wasn't that bad at all, was it, Vice? You smug prick. I love the characters in this game, but let's be honest, Vice is a smug prick. Deservedly smug prick. He's pretty good at this whole pirating malarkey. See, so at this stage, I know I've got another mini boss fight to come up. I'm thinking, have I got enough Sackley crystals? I also have five magic points for Vice and seven for Ika. So I have a little boost to magic. I can use magic if I need to. I'd rather not. Truth be told, in this game, magic's actually a bit naff. You use Ika's Delta Shield to block out pretty much any magic spell that's around. And most people don't use magic as an offensive move because it's it's expensive because it costs MP and SP. And doesn't really have the same doesn't really have the right amount of payoff. At this stage I was getting worried because we only start off with three spirit now instead of the four that we used to with uh, Drachma in the party. So I couldn't use Alpha Storm right off the bat. Which was irritating. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Surprised that didn't get Ike as well. She was pretty close. And she was just outside range. Oh, sorry, yawn. And now Vice is poison. That's a lot of damage off poison. I mean, not even the blue, 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 blue lock blob thing uh, did that amount of. Moves, give me strength. Uh, poison damage. I totally forgot what I was saying with sentence there. It really worked pretty well in that situation. Moons, give me strength. Vice probably could have got away with just attacking instead of using parry as well, but, you know. There's no kill like overkill. <laughs> hey, level up. this stage I'm gonna think I really don't want to get attacked before I leave here. I can't be bothered with another fight. I want to get topside. Fed up being in the sewers. I 
and Marco wants a word. Huh. It's a shame. Uh, a friend of mine has just informed me, I'm giving away my recording day now, uh, that George Coe has passed away. He was a original cast member on Saturday Night Live, and more recently, he voiced Woodhouse in Archer. That's a shame. I liked Woodhouse. I'm not too familiar with the rest of his work, but I really liked him as Woodhouse. Vice is a big one for ideologies. He's got the whole believe in yourself thing going for him. Impossible is just a word people use to feel good about themselves for giving up. Impossible is nothing, as one advert went. Like, this bit confuses me. Did Marco said, do you think I could ever be a sailor? If I said, yeah, you could. Despite the fact all up until this point, he's told him he doesn't have what it takes to be a sailor and he'd be crying to mommy. Oh well. Ah, so here we get introduced to the Queen. We get a little bit of uh, exposition now about what the uh, what Fina's mission is about. She's a bit um, a bit petulant, and he will prove to be a major thorn in her side. Clearly doesn't agree with his mother's ideology. I mean, that's one of the most important things I think to concern yourself with when you're building an empire is the concerns of the people. As we have learned very recently in some places in the world, people are not afraid of a violent uprising. Looks like she's got a moustache there. That's just a rendering fail. <laughs> I think it was her upper lip because it's a slightly different colour. Ooh. She didn't like that. She's a bit, um, Red, uh, is it Red Queen? In Alice in Wonderland? Mother. Must, yeah. Calling for people's heads. In fairness, Enrique, I think insulting the Queen is actually a crime. We can debate whether or not it should be, but it is. So, you know, oh, thunk on the head. Hey, guys. Fine, I will go deal with this now. <laughs> oh, I wonder who it could be. It's Ramirez. <gasps> And Fina knows that name. Yes, Your Majesty. There's a little bit of voice acting again for you. You know, for someone who took a massive smack to the head, she's not very unconscious or concussed.
here we go to the upper part of the city. It already looks a lot nicer. Still quite, um, quite steelworky. Oh, no, can't go to the cafe. So let's go save our game. There's a castle over there. Have a quick look around and see if there's any um, any what you call it items chests. What's the word? Now, if you remember where the castle was and where here is, you get Sfina over here to load her onto your train very quickly. Huge amount of detail went into Upper Valua, it seems. Didn't want you exploring too much of it. I think I realised at this point I hadn't gone looking around for Moonfish, but at the same time I hadn't heard the beeping. It's quite a cool train. Very futuristic. Very technologically advanced. We gotta catch ourselves a train. How does one catch a train? Not like that, you don't. Nice, come on, do something. There we go. Nice, no problem. Aika, blah. I love the cartoony eyes. I mean, this game isn't really scared of typical RPG tropes, so let's go. Let's get running. He's piecing things together. He knows what we're up to. The Imperial Rail Car. Gets his own mood of transport. And we'll see it next time on Skies of Arcadia.